Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Wuryawan and today I want to share my micro footage travel photography camera and lens setup that I just recently take with me on a trip to Labuan Bajo and Bali, Indonesia. Let's go. Before we continue with today's video, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm Gary Uriawan. I'm a hobbyist photographer and also a hobbyist musician. If you are interested in those things, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm talking about photography and music from the perspective of a hobbyist and enthusiast. I'm not a professional. So if you are into something that is more honest, more authentic, then you should probably subscribe to my channel. And if you are already a subscriber to my channel, or if you want to support my work even further, consider using my affiliate links down below, or you can donate to my channel using the super thanks button. It will greatly appreciate it, and it will really help me to grow this channel even further. Now let's continue with today's video. Micro Four Thirds and travel photography. These two things are match made in heaven. They are the perfect pair. If you're doing travel photography, I think you should really consider using Micro Four Thirds camera system. I talk a lot about Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses in this channel and why I think they are perfect for travel photography. So yeah, you might want to check out some of my older videos about travel photography using Micro Four Thirds camera. I will put uh, one of those videos up here on the card above, but basically today I want to share another travel photography setup using Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses that I just recently brought with me to Labuan Bajo and Bali, Indonesia. Now you might be asking the question, Hey Gary, why are you keep making these travel photography setup videos? Aren't they similar one to another? And the answer is no, they are not similar because every trip is always different every destination is always different and that requires you to adjust your travel camera and lens setup accordingly so that you can get the best result and what i hope from doing this video is so that you can learn from my travel photography setup and apply it to your own setup so that you can have a better experience travel photography experience when you are traveling in the future so from my own experience whenever i travel somewhere when it comes to travel photography there are always two kinds of destination first is urban or cultural oriented destination that means cityscape photography and then also street photography food photography that kind of cultural and urban stuff and then the second kinds of destination is nature oriented destination that means landscape photography scenery photography nature photography that kind of stuff so labuan bajo in my opinion is more of a nature oriented destination you want to photograph the seascape the beautiful beaches and then also the mountain the hill area the trees that kind of stuff so the gear that you need to carry when you visit this kind of destination will need to be matched for this nature oriented stuff so before i visited labuan bajo my thinking was i need to bring the right lenses for landscape photography for distant landscape photography and also wide angle landscape photography but i also want to be very versatile i want as little lens changes as possible because i'm going to do a boat tour using finishy boats so that means i don't want to change lenses too much and i want to be able to be very spontaneous, be able to try to capture everything with as little lens as possible. That was my way of thinking. Before I went to Labuan Bajo, a few months ago, I also went to New Zealand. And when I was in New Zealand, everything was more laid back, more relaxing. So I don't have to be worried about not being able to change lens. So the gear is kind of different now in Labuan Bajo and uh, in New Zealand. So yeah, I want to share all of those gear today and hopefully you'll be able to learn from my setup as I mentioned earlier and apply it to yours later on when you are traveling. Again, this is Micro Four Thirds camera setup. If you are using different formats, that's okay. You can just adjust to whatever uh, lenses that you have that is similar to what I have right here. But again, I just want to re-emphasize what I already said many times on my other videos. Micro Four Thirds is the best for 
travel photography because of its smaller size with its smaller lenses and also lighter weight, but it's not really compromising that much when it comes to image quality. You'll still be able to get something significantly better than your smartphone pictures. So now let's start with the actual gears that I bring to Labuan Bajo, both micro four thirds and non micro four thirds. Now let's start with the camera body itself. But usually when I do travel photography, I'd like to have two camera bodies because I don't want to change lenses too much and I want one camera body to have wider angle lens and one other camera body to have slightly more telephoto focal length. But this time, I just want to carry one camera body. That means I need something that is capable for both photography and video that can do whatever I need to do and have enough features that I think are important for this nature-oriented destination. And my camera body of choice is the Panasonic Lumix GX85, this guy right here. The reason why I brought the GX85 is very simple. The image quality coming out from this camera is more than good enough for me. It's only 16 megapixel, but the image is really sharp, it's very detailed. I think the dynamic range is there. I have some flexibility when I'm shooting with raw format and I'll be able to uh, kind of bring back blown highlights and whatnot. And it's just so nice to have this camera. Other important features from this camera is that this camera has the in-body image stabilizer built on the sensor. So if I'm using a non-stabilized lens, I can have some kind of stabilization that's very important for slow shutter speed photography and also for video. I'm not just doing travel photography, I'm also doing a little bit of video, trying to record some b-rolls and with the GX85's image stabilizer, it really helps a lot. Other important feature from this camera is that this camera has the uh, tilting screen. It's not flipping, but it helps a lot. I really wish that it's flipping though, but this is more than enough for this kind of trip. And also other important feature is the manual control of this camera. I'm able to change shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance, whatever I need quickly with dedicated buttons and dials without having to go into the menu and try to change the menu settings, which I don't really like. So yeah, those are all the important features that I think is just essential for this trip on the GX85. One more bonus feature that I really think is not really that important, but helps a lot during this trip is the USB charging on the GX85. That means I don't have to bring a dedicated battery charger. I just need to plug a micro USB cable into this camera and it will charge the camera just fine. So that really helps a lot to reduce the things that you bring inside your luggage. Now let's talk about the lenses that are brought to Labuan Bajo. But before that, I want to quickly mention about my two favorite lenses for travel photography that I didn't bring to Labuan Bajo. This is the Panasonic Leica A to 18 mm f2.8 to f4 ultra wide angle lens that can zoom into normal wide focal lengths. Really nice lens, by the way. I really enjoyed using this in New Zealand. And I also love this guy right here. This is the Panasonic Lumix 35 to 100 millimeter f4 to f5.6 mini telephoto lens. Really sharp, really nice. I really enjoy using this lens whenever I have the opportunity to use this lens. Uh, however, there are some problem when bringing these two lenses. If you wanna jump from wide angle to telephoto or from telephoto to wide angle, you have to switch lenses and that is not ideal for this Labuan Bajo trip. I brought these two lenses in New Zealand and luckily that time I have two different camera bodies. So one can have the 8 to 18 and the other one can have the 35 to 100. In this Labuan Bajo trip, I only brought the GX85 as I mentioned earlier just one camera body. And that means I need a lens that is versatile enough that can go from wide angle to telephoto, which is one lens without having to change lens. And that means super zoom lens. And during this lab one budget trip, I brought my Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter F3.5 to F5.6 lens. A really nice lens, by the way. Great for travel photography. You can go from wide angle to telephoto with just one lens without having to change lens as I mentioned earlier. 
The image quality when using super zoom lens may not be the best. You might lose a little bit of sharpness, but for my needs, it is more than good enough. I much prefer the flexibility rather than, you know, the optimum sharpness. I can lose a little bit of sharpness as long as it's not too severe. And I also did a little bit of sharpness testing of this lens. You might want to watch this video up here and it's just fine. Yeah, it's not really the sharpest lens when compared to other lenses in the uh, test, but it's more than good enough for me. It also has the optical image stabilizer right here, which works really well for that slower shutter speed photography or for video to get that smooth B-roll that you really enjoy. And yeah, this lens really helped a lot when it comes to wide angle landscape photography and also for telephoto, distant landscape photography, and also, and also for capturing some Komodo dragon in Labuan Bajo. We encountered some Komodo dragons when we visited the Rinja Island. And this lens is just really handy for getting a close up of the Komodo dragon without having to go really close to the actual Komodo dragon. So yeah, this is the Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter f3.5 to f5.6. Next lens is the Lawa 7.5mm f2 ultra wide angle lens. So the 14 to 140mm here has the 14mm wide angle focal length. It is plenty wide and maybe it's more than enough for most people. But I'm a wide angle kind of person so I always like to bring a ultra wide angle lens when I'm traveling. But I don't want to bring this beautiful guy right here, the 8 to 18 millimeter, because it's just too big and too heavy. And the answer is the Lawa 7.5 millimeter F2. This is much smaller, much lighter than the 8 to 18. And because I already have the 14 to 140, I don't really need this lens to be able to zoom and whatnot. I just need a dedicated ultra wide angle lens. So yeah, the focal length 7.5 millimeter F2, it's just really wide, really nice for getting that classic wide angle landscape shots. You can watch some of the Labuan Bajo vlogs, by the way, I will put the playlist up here. They will feature uh, the Lawa and also the 14 to 140 and the other lens that I haven't mentioned yet. But basically the Lawa works really well during this trip. The image taken using this lens are plenty sharp, plenty nice. There's a lot of contrast, lots of details. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like from the Lawa lens is that this is a manual focus only lens. So you have to be careful not to miss focus. So you have to pre-focus before you take the shot and you have to really be careful when doing that. Punch in, use the picking and whatnot to really help nail the focus. The next uh, thing that I don't really like from the Lawa lens is that it flares a lot. There's lots of ghosting. You have to really be careful when you have the sun inside your frame when you're shooting into a bright light source. And also there's a little bit of vignetting. I don't really mind the vignetting. It really helps to add it, the char character of the image, but sometimes the vignetting is just too much. However, all of those can be solved by stopping down the aperture to f4 or f5.6. So yeah, that's the Lawa 7.5 millimeter f2. Next lens that I brought with me is the Panasonic Lumix 20 millimeter f1.7 mark ii this little guy right here this is my dedicated environmental portrait lens that i use to capture some beautiful environmental portrait of my wife i just love this lens for that i think it really makes for a nice combination between the focal length and the aperture so this lens can help to blur the background but the beauty of this lens is that it's not only blurring the background but it still gives you enough context of where you are you can still see that this is an island this is the ocean this is the beach so not everything turns into blurry <laughs> nonsense but you can still tell that you are in Labuan Bajo and that is important for travel photography unlike using telephoto large aperture lens like the Olympus 75 mm f1.8 or the Olympus 45 mm f1.8 you will lose the background completely it will turn into this blurry out of focus beautiful bokeh but with this lens it's still giving you context you can still tell what it is so yeah for travel photography i want some context and this lens delivers a lot so yeah 
the Panasonic 20mm f1.7. The problem with this lens is only that uh, the autofocus is a little bit slow, but other than that, I don't have any other complaints. The image quality is just very sharp, very nice, very beautiful for portraits. You can get a lot of detail. The bokeh or the background blur is just really nice, really smooth, and I really enjoy using this lens for environmental portrait. Now, I wanna quickly mention about some non micro Fortress camera gear that I brought with me. First, this is the DJI Pocket 2 vlogging camera. So if you watch my vlogs, all of them are recorded using this little gimbal camera right here. And the audio coming out from those videos are coming from this wireless microphone that is connected directly into the DJI Pocket 2. And that's just my main vlogging rig right there. I have an attachment system that I can clip into the strap of my bag so that you can have that POV style video using the DJI Pocket 2. I really enjoy the video quality coming out from this small camera. And this rig right here with the DJI Pocket is not really that big or heavy. So it's perfect for travel vlogging. And then I also brought with me the Insta360 Go 2 action camera. There's actually the Go 3 version of this guy right here, which I'm really interested in having, but this guy is still working really fine. I use this mainly for underwater shots to give you some B-rolls of the coral, underwater, sea life, that kind of stuff, because this is a waterproof camera and I just really enjoy using this for snorkeling, kayaking, swimming, that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's all of my non micro Fortis camera gear. And speaking about accessories, I brought with me also the Billingham Hadley Small Messenger Bag to carry all of my camera gear, micro four thirds or non micro four thirds in just one single bag and still be able to carry other accessories such as power banks, my hat, my sunglass, my wallet, and extra SD cards and extra battery inside one single bag. So yeah, those are all the camera gears, my micro Fortis camera and lenses, and some non micro Fortis camera gear as well that I brought with me to my Labuan Bajo trip. And I'm very happy with the performance of every single piece of equipment that I just mentioned here. All of them get used a lot and the image produced by these gears are just fantastic. And I'm able to create some meaningful photographs, something that is really memorable and I really enjoy the images and the videos as well coming out from this gear. For my future trip, I might want to try to change some things, but this setup right here really works for Labuan Bajo and Bali. And that concludes today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that today's video is useful, inspiring, informative, and helps you to plan for your next travel setup. And if you have any question, you can comment down below. I will try to answer my best, but I wanna also know about your favorite travel setup. So you can share what's your favorite camera and lenses for travel down below. So yeah, let's have a little bit of conversation right there. And also don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, subscribing to my channel, use my affiliate links to further support my channel, and use the super thanks button to make some donation to help this channel grow even further. Thank you very much and see you on the next video. Goodbye.